Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Story Time here at the National Teachers Union. I'm Mr. Marku. When I'm not being president of the National Teachers Union, I was a first grade teacher and a fifth grade teacher. And what I miss most about teaching to this day is read aloud time. So I know we're all stuck wherever we may be, whether we're at home or at grandma's or wherever we are. We're trying our best to help you make it through the day. So we're gonna have two stories for you today. Um, the first one is a favorite of mine, the little mouse, the red ripe strawberry and the big hungry bear. Now, if you are a student at one of our elementary schools, I may have come in and read this because this is my favorite book ever. It is my copy when I was a kid and I'm gonna share it with you today. So I'm gonna try to show you the pictures. This is our first time doing this, so bear with us. Um, and after I'm done that, today is, uh, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, so we have a St. Patrick's Day story to go as well. So this is the little mouse, the red ripe strawberry, and the big hungry bear. <gasps> Hello, little mouse, what are you doing? Oh, I see. Are you going to pick that red ripe strawberry? But little mouse, haven't you heard of the big hungry bear? <gasps> oh, how that bear loves red ripe strawberries. I love red ripe strawberries too. The big hungry bear can smell a red ripe strawberry a mile away. A Especially one that has just been picked. Uh-oh. Boom, boom, boom. The bear will tromp through the forest on his big hungry feet and find the strawberry. No matter where it is hidden. or who is guarding it or how it is disguised. Insert giggling here. Quick, there's only one way in the whole wide world to save a red ripe strawberry from the big hungry bear. Anyone know? Any guesses? You can, if you're able to comment in the comment box, we'll see what happens. Cut it into share half with me. Would have been a better lunch than what I ate today. And we'll both eat it all up. Yum. Now that is one red ripe strawberry that the hungry bear will never get. The end. Well, you can see I've used this book a lot. It's a, one of my favorites. And tomorrow being St. Patrick's Day, I found this on the bookshelf at my house and it's called The Night Before St. Patrick's Day. So I thought it was appropriate for right now. And did people, people are commenting, did they guess what was gonna happen to the, the red hungry bear? or the big, the red ripe strawberry. I can still speak, I do promise. So the night before St. Patrick's Day. Twas the night before St. Patrick's Day, the day to wear green. Not a creature was stirring except Tim and Maureen. They decked out the den from ceiling to floor with streamers and rainbows and shamrocks galore. Later, they carefully made traps with gold charms and rings. I bet we catch a leprechaun. They love shiny things. For if they caught one, so the legend told, they find where he buried his big pot of gold. They set all of the traps round the room with great care in hopes so we Irishmen soon would be theirs. 
I know some of our younger grade levels have set traps in their classrooms looking for the leprechaun. I don't know if we've ever caught one in Nashua. We've tried though. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of gold coins danced in their head. Happy St. Patty's Day, said Dad early the next morning. Then he started to play bagpipes without warning. He huffed and he puffed an old Irish song. Mom dished out green eggs and sang loudly along. When from their bedroom there arose such a clatter, the kids ran down the hallway to see what was the matter. And what to their wandering eyes should appear? But a terrible mess. My children were here. No, a leprechaun was here. Not my children. Although they could have done this too. Be quiet, whispered Maureen. He's hiding somewhere. When we find him, remember, we must hold his stare. For if you look away, if you so much as blink, leprechauns vanish, quick as a wink. The kids trailed muddy footprints back and forth across the floor which led them under Tim's bed and past the closet door. And then inside a trap, they heard someone giggling, a real live leprechaun. They both saw him wriggling. His eyes, how they twinkled, his body so tiny, his hand clasped a trinket so gold and shiny. He was dressed in all green from his head to his toes, and he looked like a cobbler wearing fairy-sized clothes. The children approached, approached him, staring straight in his eyes. Tell us where the gold is. Don't be tricky, no lies. I buried it under a rock smooth and hard. It's marked with an X right in your backyard. But when the kids went outside with their shovel and their pick, they saw instantly it was all a big trick. Look at the X's all over the yard on those rocks. Can you believe that? That silly leprechaun. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Ha <laughs> ha, I fooled you. It's time to disappear. Happy St. Patty's Day to you and better luck next year. Well, I hope you enjoyed our first story time live on Facebook. We'll take requests, no guarantees. Maybe we'll get some of your teachers or paras or people that you know will come down and read with me or teach me how to read. I hope you enjoyed this afternoon. Now, back to what you're doing. We'll see you later.